Hello everyone and welcome to another casual review. Today I'm talking about Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Just like the Hyra and Mithra amiibo made me want to replay Xenoblade Chronicles 2, the Noah and Mio amiibo made me want to replay Xenoblade Chronicles 3. This game takes place in a world where people are born almost in like these test tubes and they start at age 14 or 15, if I'm to guess, and they only have 10 years to live. They call these years cycles. So after these 10 years, essentially you uh, turn into these light motes and you float up into the sky. And this is the only world that these people have ever known. If that doesn't sound bad enough, the other thing that affects these people's lives is this giant flame clock, which is basically like a giant flaming circle that needs to be constantly fed. And your your whole life, your whole existence is based on this flame clock surviving and thriving. And the only way to feed this flame clock is by killing your enemy. So in this world, there are these two factions at war with each other, and they're constantly killing each other to feed their own flame clocks in order to survive. So even though 10 years, 10 cycles, does not seem like very long, odds are you probably won't make it to those 10 years because you're probably going to die in battle. And if you do survive those 10 cycles, then they throw this big ceremony for you. Um, the queen is there and it's it's kind of a big deal. And that's kind of what all people are thriving, striving for is to survive those 10 years and make it to your ceremony where you essentially die. Existence here is very bleak and very very grim, but it's the only world that these people have ever known until one fateful day they get a mission. Our three uh, main starting characters get a mission to investigate a mysterious aircraft and recover any uh, supplies that they gather from there and they encounter a really old person and he seems really mysterious because they've never seen anybody old before but they also run into our three other main characters from the other faction and so these two factions these three people from each faction are duking it out and the old man kind of uh, he's on his deathbed at this moment because his his aircraft crash landed and so he out of desperation turns these six people into something called Called Ouroboros and the idea of Ouroboros is it gives these people the power to fuse together and so basically one thing leads to another and these six main characters realize that their whole world is essentially a lie and they need to team up together and make it to a landmark that the old man told them about before he passed away and uh, he encourages them to find their own destiny and find out who the real enemy is because they shouldn't be fighting each other. And the real enemy turns out to be these bad guys called Mobius. So it is pretty interesting seeing these, these characters who were once at war with each other learning to work together and set aside their differences in order to overcome this ultimate evil. And then there is also like our, our two main main characters are named Noah and Mio and there's kind of like a, a romance of Romeo and Juliet esque thing here because they're they're at opposing factions of this war but then there's this romance that starts budding between them and uh, really these characters don't know anything about romance because um, love and marriage isn't really a thing that exists in their lives. So now I'm hesitant to bring up many more spoilers other than that because this still is a relatively new game. It came out within the last couple of years but there is a ton of plot twists and turns and and side stories and all of our I think they did a really good job fleshing out all of our six main characters with their own fears and motivations and backstories it's no wonder that this game took me about 60 hours to complete because there is a lot of plot here and along with that plot are a ton of cutscenes, even more than Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2. It just feels like all the time you are watching cutscenes. So that can be a pro or a con depending on who you are. But really, these cuts, like I like a good cutscene. And some of these cutscenes are really cool. There's really cool battle scenes going on, and they can be really entertaining. But other times, these cutscenes can stretch on a bit too long for my taste. I think at even one point, 
point, there is about an hour's worth of cutscenes with small gameplay elements in between these cutscenes. But like an hour, that can feel like a lot. And that can also be a downside if you have very limited game time. If you sit down to play an hour's worth of game and, you know, at a good majority of it is watching cutscenes, you may feel a little cheated out of your gameplay time. I'll admit, sometimes after a long day, I sit down to play this game and then it gets, it hits me with a 10 minute cutscene. I may or may not have fallen asleep every now and again. Not necessarily because it's boring, but just because I'm not doing anything. I'm just watching something and I, I do kind of tend to start falling asleep when I'm watching TV shows or movies. So take that information with what you will. If you have limited gaming time, maybe this might not be the game for you. I mean, it's already a huge time commitment. This may be the longest Xenoblade game. Um, my in-game time did say it was about 60 hours, but I'm willing to bet that only is the time that I was actually playing the game. So if you add in the cutscenes, I wouldn't be surprised if that added at least an additional 10 hours. So maybe like a 70 hour uh, investment. And I didn't do all the side content. There is a ton of side content for you to play through and explore lots of additional side quests there's lots of exploration, there's lots of uh, items to gather, so if you're completionist, I could see upwards of maybe even 200 hours playing this game. And at the beginning, I did, I was doing all the side content, collecting all the stuff, like I always do whenever I play an RPG, but, you know, like I, what always happens whenever I play an RPG, I do hit that wall where I'm like, okay, I am just going to go straight to the main quest, I am done with getting sidetracked and it ended up being okay this isn't really a game where you need to necessarily grind for experience levels and you have to do those side quests i mean by the end of the game i was still a higher level than than the main end guy i was level 78 by the end of the game and the the main boss was level 75 so i think i still was higher than the recommended level that doesn't mean that this game was easy by any stretch of the imagination. You still need to think on your feet and you still need to be actively engaged. I just think that I didn't need to do 100% of the content in order to finally overcome all of those obstacles like I did when I was playing Xenoblade Chronicles 1 because that first game, when I was playing against that end boss, it the, the difficulty level was too high for me compared to this game where it still felt manageable. So yes, let's just get into um, combat now. Now the combat works uh, in a similar vein as the first two games. You have your basic attacks, which uh, can then be chained into using arts, which are like your, your special abilities, which can then be chained into using a stronger art. I can't remember the name of it, but like a super ability. And so you're, you're you're chaining together these weaker attacks into stronger attacks, but then, um, like all Xenoblade games, you have your super strong chain attacks. And I liked how Xenoblade Chronicles 2 handled this more than this game. This game basically, it, it slows everything. It basically like pauses everything. So you're not worrying about um, getting hit by abilities or choosing your attacks really quickly. It basically pauses the game and then you just choose which character does their attack. And you're basically building up this percentage meter and then they do an attack and then it's rinse and repeat and then you're trying to build that meter back up to 100 percent and i'm not going to go too much further into the details about this chain attack but uh by the end of the game this did get quite repetitive doing this chain attack i didn't i don't like how it just freezes everything um it is nice to have that chance to like think about what you're going to do but at the same time you're watching the same animations over and over and over again especially if you're an abuser of the chain attacks like I am and it would be in your best interest to do so because yeah they can rack a ton of damage but it is kind of boring watching that pause screen and watching the same attack animations over and over again compare that to something like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 with the orb system that you have to like break the orbs I don't know I just think I like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 way of handling the chain attacks better but this game does also introduce the mechanic that the Ouroboros have this ability that these two characters can fuse together 
together in order to create like a super strong body that can do a lot of damage. And these are fun to use. You do feel powerful using them. Um, and I do like that you can kind of still customize your Ouroboros as well in terms of like what kind of arts they have and they even have their own unique skill tree. So I did like that aspect where these two characters can like fuse together. It kind of reminded me of uh, Steven Universe if you've ever seen that where they, they have this ability to fuse into like this stronger body and I liked looking at the designs of all of them as well. It also just has that typical RPG stuff. You're leveling up, um, you're, you're customizing your character with accessories. One of the really cool things about this game compared to the other Xenoblade games is they have a really cool class system in that you essentially can acquire these jobs and you can level up these jobs so each character can level their job up to a level 10 and then once they get up to level 10 then they can keep one of the abilities from that job and it can carry over to their next job and this is a really good way of keeping things fresh because yeah you can play uh, your six different characters you can choose like which one you're going to play as um, but then there's also these job systems on top of it which change the characters visuals and change the way that they fight and so there are three different classes you can play as an attacker a defender or a healer and I'm just going to play as an attacker because I don't want to tank or heal for uh, NPCs that sounds quite boring but there's it is a nice way of keeping things fresh in that like playing those attacker roles because there's a huge variety in terms of like the weapons that they use and the abilities that they have and there's positioning too so you need to worry about like if you're attacking from the side or the back to maximize your your damage output so it's cool like if you if you get bored of using the the sword job then maybe you want to go to the gun job or the lance job and it's it keeps things fresh and they also do that thing that they do in all xenoblade games where they say the attack that they're doing this can go quite tedious and you may want to turn off the dialogue if that's a possibility I'm not actually sure but they they say they're doing their their attack and they announce it and it can get annoying when you're playing the same character over and over again and hearing them yell the same things but then all of your party members are also yelling out their attacks that they're doing too so it's just a bunch of people yelling out words like flame slash and and super shot and they're all just yelling it out not to mention they have some uh frequently repeated dialogue it's kind of become a meme at this point online where uh after you do a fight one of the characters says you hear that noah lands want something a bit meatier and she says it a lot uh, there are other lines too but yeah there there's some repeated dialogue here that can be annoying and it's not really like the type of game where you can usually just turn off the volume volume and watch a show or listen to a podcast while you play because of all the cinematics. So you're going to be constantly pausing your podcast or, or TV show in order to listen to those cinematics. So it's just like a, a, a balance that you need to do in terms of like uh, the volume and your engagement. But really, yeah, there is a ton of exploration to do here and you are frequently awarded rewarded to, in doing so, not just in experience points and resources, but you can also find the these like super strong enemies similar to the other Xenoblade games and uh, that's where it really tests your skill and it will time like how fast you beat these enemies and uh, you'll get like bonus CP and things like that for defeating them. There is one job that you get uh, fairly late into the game and the idea is when you have this job equipped on your character when you defeat one of these elite enemies you will basically like inherit a skill or an art from that enemy and I really really liked the idea of that but I hated that you got it so late in the game that if you really wanted to maximize the utilization of this job, you have to go back and re-defeat all of those elite enemies that you defeated in the past. And going along with this job system, uh, you can also, like, like, each job has its own kind of outfit attached to it. And once you, I believe once you get a, a job to level 10, then you will permanently unlock that outfit. So you can play as a different job and keep the outfit from the same job that you were playing before. Um, if you want, if like, I don't know, for some reason you really liked the outfit there. And that's pretty much what the Amiibos, the Noah and Mio Amiibo unlock. They unlock like uh, uh, different outfits, unique outfits for Noah and Mio. But I won't go any more into depth about that because we are breaching 
uh, spoiler territory when we talk about the amiibo unlocks. What's cool is if you do scan the Xenoblade 1 and 2 amiibo into this game, then you will unlock their weapons for those games, from those games as well, which is a cool little callback. And I should say specifically about the job system that uh, jobs can technically go up to level 20, I believe. You'll just need to do additional side quests to unlock that additional 10 levels for the jobs. But I do love exploring these worlds. If Xenoblade is known for anything, it's its world building and visual set pieces where there are just these huge landmarks to explore and just looking off in the back in the distance and seeing these giant buildings and architecture. And it's, it's definitely a really cool place to be. And one thing that I really like about the Xenoblade games is this fusion between science fiction and high fantasy and it just is something entirely unique that you don't see in any other franchise and you better hope it's a it's a cool world to be in because you're going to be in it for a very long time and over that time you know you you really do start to get a attached to the all of these characters not just our six main characters but there's plenty of other characters too that you start uh, gaining a fondness for and liking them um, I like the way that these characters all talk to each other it's almost like a um, the series Maze Runner, if you've ever read or seen that, where they kind of like make up their own swear words like spark. I don't know. I assume the it's a replacement for the F word. But I also like the the dialogues and I like the all the accents that these characters, that these voice actors have. The bad guys are villainous in all the right ways and it's fun to to beat them up after you see their their vast power and finally you're you're overcoming the power. It's almost like the Mobius at the beginning are just kind of like toying with you because they're they're so cocky that there's no way you could possibly defeat them. And so it's always fun like finally defeating them and seeing the shock on their face when you actually did beat them up. It's just a it's just a, a cool game. Not perfect by any means, but I, I still really enjoyed it just as much as I did the other Xenoblade games. I couldn't tell you which Xenoblade game I like the best. Instinctively, I want to say the first one, but really they I like them all for different reasons. And if you're wondering if you need to play the first two Xenoblade games before you play this, I will say you don't necessarily have to, but you will appreciate the world building a lot more if you do play the first two games and I would even recommend playing those in order because there are references to Xenoblade 1 and Xenoblade 2 but they're not necessarily um, tied together in any strong way as far as like the core main stories of the game. I feel like you could jump into Xenoblade 3 and understand the story just fine. There's just additional side content and maybe like this overall lore that may fly over your head. Plus I do just recommend playing through all three games. So you might as well start with one and then two and then three. They're all on the Switch anyway. Besides Xenoblade X, I've never played Xenoblade X. So I'm hoping that does eventually make a port to uh, the Switch someday. There's also a DLC for this game that I did not get to. Um, I just went straight to the computer after beat rolling the credits for Xenoblade 3. Uh, I'm unsure if the DLC is something like Torna in Xenoblade 2 where it's its own standalone story and I can just hop straight in without, like I'm not sure if the content, like the gameplay, the levels, the gear transfers over to the DLC or not, or if technically it's like a fresh start when I play through that DLC. But I will eventually get to that DLC. I just need a palette cleanser from Xenoblade because I've been playing it for such a long time. But I do intend on eventually playing that DLC because I've heard very good things about it. And from what I've seen in terms of like the trailers, it does seem like it's this cul this like ultimate culmination between all three Xenoblade games where they bring back um, potentially Rex and Shulk. I, I think I've seen them. So that'll be really fun to play through eventually. Overall, I think I will give Xenoblade Chronicles 3 a five out of five. It definitely has its flaws, but I just think that it is a really great experience if you have the time to sink into it. Well guys, that's it for me. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye!